Hi, so we're gonna do a quick garden walkthrough today. It's August 5th, 2024, so midway through the summer. Really beautiful time of year. Everything's just growing and flourishing. Um, we're gonna start off in the potager area with a lot of raised beds and our unheated greenhouse. Have a look about how things are going there. We also have a lot of berry bushes and perennial plants there. And then we're gonna go over to the annex area where we're doing a lot of succession planting in the raised beds there keep things going throughout the season. And then I uh, talk about these artichoke plants that are behind me. So this is a garden for our restaurant. So it's an active garden. We're harvesting from it all the time. Uh, there was just a music festival in town last weekend. So we uh, harvested a lot out of it. Uh, and also it needs a good weeding. I didn't weed it before I did this video because I thought, ah, it's real. Um, so yeah, have a look. It's fun. It's a great time of year and I can't wait to show you. All right, so here we go into the potager area. So we come off the patio and then you can see here are the windows into the dining room. So those look out over the garden and folks can see what's going on. And then down below, we've got kind of like a wildflower area that grows up every year. So right now it is full of borage, which the pollinators have been totally loving. There's dozens and dozens and dozens of bees. We've also got a little bit of yarrow, a little bit of calendula. Other years there's been a lot more calendula, but I find it's interesting just every year something will do better and something will not do as well. So it's a mix. And then over here we've got sort of our edible flower garden. There's a view of uh, this part of the garden here. So in the edible flowers we've got these beautiful blue corn flowers. I really like those. Uh, and behind that some uh, really nice oregano that's come up. And then this beautiful snapdragons uh, just behind. So these are all edible flowers we harvest constantly using on drinks, on the plates. Uh, they add just such a nice like pop of color and they're really fun to use in the garden. And then over here, this is the first time I've actually grown fennel and I can't believe it. It's grown really fast, really beautiful. The fronds have been fun to use. Uh, over here we've got some big avocado trees. I don't think we'll ever get avocados, but whatever. And then down there are some pawpaws that I grew from seed this year. So that's a long-term project. So back into this part of the garden, what have we got? There's some kale here. And like I said, we harvested a lot this weekend. So I've got some new kale interplanted in there and some new salad greens as well, head lettuces. Uh, over here is a collards bed. So we like using collards. They're something you can't get around here. So I've got some baby collards coming up and some bigger ones. I find this bed has a lot of flea beetles in it. So the seedlings right there are struggling, but they'll do okay. And then some more lettuce. This is the next head lettuce that we're going to be harvesting. We took a lot out this weekend. So there's some empty gaps for sure. Uh, over here as well, some broccoli. I've tried to grow broccoli so many times and I don't know, it's not even really heading out. It's a bit disappointing. I might get rid of it and put something else in at this point. I mean, there's time yet for it to head, but whatever. Um, over here, I've just got some black eyed Susans that are nice to use as cut flowers on the tables and then all kinds of beautiful thyme. I find thyme grows like almost every month of the year, really early in the spring, really late into the fall. So it's nice to have a lot of it. And then we've got these grapes growing over the arbor. So many grapes this year. I'm super excited to make grape juice uh, and to try different things with them. Uh, and then they grow up. And over here, there's a few different kinds of table grapes that we grow. And then what else? There's a few, uh, oh, the pear tree. So the pear tree we planted when we first got here and it's like 30 feet tall at this point. And the last few years we have harvested so many beautiful pears. This one's a variety called Sunrise. They're a really nice red color and they're just sort of sizing up. It's dropping some fruit because there's so many, so many fruit on it, but uh, yeah, it's looking great. And then we've got some marshmallow, which is really just a wildflower for pollinators. And speaking of pollinators, we've got some milkweed here. And this is fun because actually this year we had some monarch butterflies come. And then some lemon balm. This is sort of a perennial tea garden area. Uh, some anise hyssop. 
And then over here, some more perennial herbs. So there's a tarragon and some uh, yarrow plants, some zinnias that are just annuals. Uh, and then that's some more bee balm there. And what else? Chives and summer savory, all kinds of beautiful things, some tulsi. And then there's some pea shoots that got a little bit uh, overgrown, but they were pretty great earlier in the season. And there's a rogue uh, horseradish patch. So that takes us to the back area of the garden. So this back area was a pretty new addition this year. There used to be an apple tree here and a couple of hascap bushes, but we moved them out because we wanted to make more room for a hot loving, heat loving crops. Um, so zucchinis, tomatillos, eggplant, some more tomatoes. We've got some beets and we've got some peppers. So all of these things like a lot of sun, a lot of warmth, and this is behind me is due south. So uh, taking out that apple tree that didn't really do that much uh, in terms of producing apples, uh, really opened up this area and made it into a really useful, really uh, productive space. So I'm really excited about it this year. All right, so around here we've got the zucchini. They're interplanted with nasturtiums, and there's a big one. We took a lot of zucchini out of here this weekend, but they grow so fast, it's incredible this time of year. And we've really stocked those up and pruned them back a little bit to make more room. Uh, the nasturtiums are beautiful as always, and one of my favorite edible flowers. Then we've got the eggplant. This is probably the first year I've grown eggplant really successfully and the eggplant flowers are in bloom so fruit won't be long. And then over here some tomatillos. They really took a long time to get started and I was worried about them but they look great right now. I'm excited about that. And then over here some beets. So we've got beets interplanted with carrots. Uh, carrots will probably be a really nice fall crop and I've been planting in the gaps of the beets as well. And then some tomatoes. So I put some determinate tomatoes. They're called Scotias out here and pruned them a little bit the other day. And then some uh, Acadian cherry tomatoes. So these are outdoors. They're doing pretty well, growing pretty tall. And we've got lots of green tomatoes on there ready to ripen up. And then peppers, lots of jalapenos, different kinds of hot peppers. And in the back, we've got some pots. So stinging nettle that I use for tea and also a couple kinds of mint and then ground cherries. I find they sort of sprawl in raised beds. So I like to grow them in containers. Uh, and then we've got a curry leaf tree that somebody gave me. And back here in the corner, we've got a couple sea buckthorn, a male and a female. Haven't got any fruit yet. We just planted them last year. And then that's a gooseberry. Uh, lots of fruit off of that and this whole area in the back was grown up really badly with bindweed last year uh, it did really well and it got out of control and it's growing from under and over the other side of the fence so we put down landscape fabric and mulch and we're just pulling it up wherever we see it and getting rid of it which seems to be working which is awesome so in here we've got some lovage some sage some other tomatoes and a bunch of celery that actually is doing super well, which is exciting. And yeah, let's see. So that brings us to the corner. And then let's turn around and go look at the berry bushes. So I love to grow perennial berry bushes because they're so prolific, so easy. This is an elderberry bush, black elder. It's a little bit crazy and unwieldy, but we just harvested lots of beautiful flowers off of it and now it's producing berries and speaking of berries the raspberries are just ripening up and they're so delicious there's lots and lots and lots of raspberries in there which is exciting and what else the sour cherry tree there was tons of sour cherries on it this year it's having a little bit of a dieback problem but we're working on figuring out what that is and then these are high bush blueberries that are finally uh, thriving this year. They've been around for a while. And then underplanted in those is radishes. I just stick radishes wherever there's a gap throughout the year. Uh, and then over here, some of the potted plants that come inside or are protected in the winter, and those are including figs. So the fig trees are doing really well. They've got really large. Uh, oh, and there's a blackberry. They're also just starting for the year. And they're beside a red currant that finished up a couple weeks ago. 
So here's another fig tree. This is the biggest of them, and there's actually quite a few figs on it. So we're very much looking forward to those ripening up. They're getting there. They're pretty soft and beautiful. This greenhouse is one of my favorite parts of the garden because it allows us to grow almost year round. And this time of year, it is full of tomatoes and cucumbers. So I'm really stoked about that. Uh, also, we've got a lot of really beautiful basil. We've been rolling up the sides in the last two years and I found that that's actually added to its productivity. Uh, it seems like the idea is you wanna get things as hot as possible in a greenhouse, but that's not true in the summer. It needs to be actually a little bit cooler than the maximum temperatures that um, might get reached in here on a hot day. So we'll have a look inside and see what's going on. All right, so inside the greenhouse, the left-hand side is full of tomatoes. So these are all indeterminate tomatoes that I've tied up to the top on vertical strings. And these are Sylvana Golds, and then there's some that are a Moscovich. Mostly I've had just one liter on them, but some of them I've allowed two liters to grow because I felt like I did have enough room. And you can see I'm just taking off the suckers as they grow on most of them and then just continuing to tie them up to the ceiling. Done this for a lot of years and it seems to work really well to get a lot of fruit. And we harvested quite a bit of fruit already uh, and more is just on its way. Also interplanted some green onions underneath the tomatoes. I find when we prune them this way, there's actually a little bit of space on the ground for weeds to grow, but also for other crops, which is nice. And in the back, it's funny, you know, I grow all the tomatoes from seed, plant them at the same time in the same way, and some of them just don't do anything. So I've got a couple here that are pretty small, but whatever, most of them are great. Back here, there's a perennial herb area, which is awesome in the springtime. So we've got some fig trees there. And then this is a gem marigold and it has a beautiful citrusy scent and a really nice smell, a great edible flower. And then over here are most of the cucumbers. So a lot of these are pickling cukes because we make a lot of pickles, whether they're quick pickles or jarred pickles, uh, for the restaurant through the year, and they're getting really big. I had a bit of a hard time getting them to germinate this year, so we've got some that are small, some that are bigger, but I feel like the small ones are going to catch up. Then we've got some pepper plants in here. These are like a sweet pepper and a lot of basil, and this is a fun one. This was at the nursery. It's sort of a hybrid between purple and green basil, so... I kind of liked it because it was a weird mutant, so I picked that one. Lots of other basil plants. This is one of my best years growing basil, which I'm super excited about. And oh, so, oh, we've got some okra. The okra's not very big, but it is just starting to flower, so we'll get a couple okra pods, but I don't know, I try. So the cucumbers are climbing and I've been pruning off the bottom suckers because I don't want them to get too unwieldy like these cucamelons are. Cucamelons are kind of funny. They're just sort of a silly novelty fruit, but I thought they'd be fun on cocktails and they're just kind of like neat to look at. They grow pretty well. So that's about it for the greenhouse right now. It's a pretty lush jungle. It's amazing. And then beside the greenhouse, we've got a little corridor that doesn't get a lot of sun. So we've got an espalier apple trees here. Uh, we just pruned them. With espaliers, you prune them three times a year, and we bagged all the fruit. So that's to try and keep the coddling moths from crawling inside the fruit. They're a honey crisp variety of apple. So it would be great to get some big, beautiful apples out of there. We also moved all the rhubarb into this area and it's totally thriving. We've got a bit of, little bit of cilantro interplanted in there as well. And then that brings us back to the building where you can see the windows looking out from the dining room. And we're gonna go back out onto the patio and then we're gonna go into a whole other area that's on the other side of the patio. So this is a whole other garden that we have. And this is the garden that we call the annex. It doesn't look like there's a lot growing in here, but it's because we've actually harvested from this garden several times already. So we've taken out potatoes, we've taken out the peas, uh, we've harvested a ton of radishes, quite a bit of chard. Uh, so all of those things have come out and then we're putting things back in. So we're constantly planting seeds, planting more beans where the peas were, planting things in succession so we can keep going all year. Because it's only August 5th right now, we've still got 
you know, two good months of growing uh, and then a little bit of time in October probably before we get a frost. So we're trying to maximize that time uh, and also maximize the amount we can get out of our small space to use in the restaurant. So the head lettuce all just came out of here. There's a couple little tiny ones left and then I just seeded a bunch of Hakurai turnips. So they have only a 25 days to maturity so we should see those before too long. There's a couple of radishes left in there as well. And then in here this was all grown up in peas that were beautiful uh, and we've still got a lot of really nice yellow bush beans and then I just planted all these pole beans to replace the peas so they're going to grow back up on that trellis and it shouldn't be long. They'll grow pretty quickly in this nice August heat and sun. And then over here we've got some head lettuce coming up. So these are a French heirloom variety called uh, Ice Queen and they turned into really beautiful tight heads. Uh, really happy with that variety. And then over here we've got carrots. So we harvested a lot of carrots and then in between we uh, just have been planting more, so that's second and third planting, maybe even fourth planting of carrots. This was a potato bed. We had a lot of new potatoes, and then I just put some zucchinis in, so I think there'll still be time for some zucchinis to grow. And then we've got a lot of flat leaf parsley and some cilantro. So again, big, big plants have been pulled out, but there's lots of little ones coming right now. And then back here in this dark corner, I just have some uh, indoor tomatoes and peppers that I'm going to keep over the winter. I've got some head lettuces and then a couple other plants that just I thought I'd germinate a little bit in pots. So I'm always just planting things in pots, letting the seeds grow, planting seeds in the garden, trying to keep things going uh, throughout the season just so we can continue to harvest from the small spaces and uh, yeah, extend our harvest as long as we can into the fall because we've got lots of time so oh what's over here so here we've got our next radishes that are coming up I've actually got two rows of radishes ones uh, that are a few weeks old and then ones that are just germinating there's a couple little head lettuces in here but mostly it's some more peppers so there's peppers and cucumbers they're a little bit behind the other uh, garden beds but that's okay I like having a few that are at different stages of growth looks like this cucumber needs to be stiked up it's actually growing really fast right now uh, so yeah that's working out pretty well so these will just be a little bit later because it's a little bit shadier there's another pear tree on this side of the garden so you can see it uh, casts a fair bit of shade but it's nice to have some shady areas and some sunny areas and then that brings us back on the patio so this is a uh, full of people some nights and it's a really beautiful space for people to enjoy the garden and then the artichokes so I like planting the artichokes in the patio just because they're really crazy looking plants they're so big and spiky and this one hasn't headed out quite yet. I grew these from seed starting in like March, so they're pretty mature plants. And then this one has some heads happening. I find the heads don't get too big, so we don't actually get very big chokes, but you know, we try. So those are the ones that grew from seed. And then this one's actually overwintered from last year. The leaves are getting a little bit ragged and the choke is about to flower. They have really beautiful flowers, so I'm gonna leave that one to be enjoyed. So thanks so much for watching our garden tour. Like and subscribe and you'll see more like this and if you're in the maritime area of Canada stop by Sackville New Brunswick Duck Center Real Restaurant and you can see it in person.